It says in Mark, for this reason, I am telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance to God's will. That's now we're qualifying what is asking in prayer mean. It's in accordance to God's will. It's not in accordance to what you want. It's not in accordance to what you think. It's, accordance, it's in accordance. It's in alignment with God's word, with God's will. So when I pray, listen, prayer warriors, I should be praying what God's will says. Because then in Isaiah, the Bible says that, watch this, his word will not return back into him void. So the last time I prayed, I prayed, but my word seemed to come void. What I'm asking for didn't happen. But what God says that when you pray what his word says, it cannot come back unto him void. That's what it says. Amen. It says that if you pray this way, it says believe with confident trust that you have received them, then they will be given to you. This, in this scripture, it says, I'm praying something and I already believe I received. All right. All right. Some of you all saw me and uh, Brother David um, praying. So, Brother David, this is what you should do. So we can come in agreement. So as pastor prayed for you, we come in agreement and the brothers come in. All you got to do is say, it's already done. So you can look at your wife in the face. This is the same thing I do with my wife. I look, I look at her and I'm still working on it too to say, okay, it's not here yet, but it's already done. See, if you ain't paying attention to me now, it's just such a shame. Because how many times I've said, this is not nothing new. It's nothing new. This is what I'm just saying to you, David. So, Douglas, what you should do with your wife, too, is that, now watch this. I'm going to pray for something, but when I pray for it, it's going to come from the scripture, going to come from the word. And, and, and listen, watch this. Ayata, it's already done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Now, now, she may get frustrated. Kids may get frustrated. It may look, it's supposed to work like that because how do you act when things go awry? How do you act when things are not? But, but when we prayed for it, according to what the scripture says, it's already done. Can't nobody stop it. Can't nobody derail it except for me. So then the Bible says that, 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 that Josh, uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb, right? They were the two spies that went to go and give a report of what was going on in the land, right? Yeah. So it was 12 of, 12 of them, but only two came back with a good report. Right. So I'm talking to the men now. What report do you give in your house? So the report I'm giving into my house, I'm giving to my house, my wife, that this is already going to work out, not just because Darren is all of that. That's how I used to be. Right. Right. But this is going to work out because God, I found a word that what God's word says, watch this, and now you and I can come together in agreement that this thing is going to come to pass. So when I'm asking, I'm asking in prayer and God says this word will not be returned back into him void. God says it shall be done. When I ask in faith, watch this. If any of you lacks wisdom, we're in James 1, 5 through 8. If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, we get stuck because we're trying to figure out, we're trying to make decisions. Say, you see that, Renee? We're trying to make decisions. I got circumstances and I got decisions to make. And so I'm trying to go from here to where I, I, I built a comfortable life here, but I'm trying to get from here and I'm trying to blaze it over there. Pay attention real good here because I'm trying to show you what me and First Lady are doing right now. What we're doing right now. Somebody say right now, right now. Yeah. So we build our life to a pl place to where you get comfortable. So what I always do, I like to blow up my area of being comfortable, but I put a, I've told you this for years, I put a cylinder over it. Because I don't want to lose everything that I've built. Are you hearing me? But I'm going to blow it up, meaning that I gotta disjoint what I'm doing because I'm too comfortable in this place. And so I'm gonna have to pray different, I'm gonna do something different, but I'm gonna have to blow this up. I'm gonna have to confront something. I'm going to have to, to I'm gonna have to blow this up because I'm gonna go from here and I'm going to come all the way over here. And I'm going to do it because I'm going to ask in faith, which means I'm going to have to make a move when it's going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to have to make a move even when I don't have the money. I'm going to have to make a move when everybody else disagrees. I'm, it's going to be uncomfortable. His mercy and grace is richer than anything you've ever done. Now, the way we think of it, I can't fool with God yet because I ain't right yet. And God says, you don't understand the wealth that I have. I'm so wealthy, watch this, he says, I'm so wealthy in this grace and mercy and thing that I can, over, I can trump what you're doing. Watch this. When God blesses you at that level, listen to me good, it brings you to the point to say, I'm cool. 
Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Listen to what I'm saying. When you get blessed on a certain level, it makes you say, I'm stopped. I, okay, I, 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 you know, I ain't drinking no more. I, I ain't smoking no more. I, I'm, I'm cool. Anybody ever been there to say, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about because you still ain't, you know. But God says still, God says this, still ask me. Because God says, I want to bless you so good. I want to bless you enough to where it make you want to quit sin. <laughs> he says, I already did it by giving you my son, but you don't understand that. Because Jesus said on the cross, he says, they know not what they do. So when you go into sin after Jesus did what he did on the cross, he's still saying they know not what they do. But it didn't stop. It didn't stop Jesus from still loving you and going through yes. with it. Yes. So the way God expresses himself today, God drops stuff on you. And, 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 and then it's like, God, you gave me this house. God, I, I'm sitting here, Lord. I, I don't even deserve God to even be in here. If you keep it real, I don't even, God, I don't even deserve it. God, I don't deserve to be sitting up driving in this car. When I, when I pass somebody by the bus stop, I say, Lord, I just want to, somebody pulled up on the side of the road? God, thank you. Because God, I don't deserve it. Sometimes you get blessed so good, it'll just make you want to stop. So let's say this, it stands to reason that some of y'all ain't got blessed good enough to make you stop your current sin. Did you hear me? Pastor, how'd you stop some of your sin? He blessed me so good, I said, I quit. <laughs> Don't want to even do it no more, amen? Don't even want to do it. Why? Because God is so good. If this is how you roll, I, 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 I'm done. The taste of that thing, not even in me anymore. I feel like I'm pulling the truck. So, I'm, so come on with me here. Come on, I'm, I'm going to pull y'all today. Tap your he's going to pull you today. He's going to pull you today. What are we saying? I'm asking you to get your ask back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said it. I said, I said, I'm asking you to get your ask back. Yeah, yeah. I'm on live and everything. Yeah, y'all with me? Some of the cussing saints will really appreciate what I'm saying. You got to get your ask back. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been one to cuss, so I don't know how to cuss good. But at least you understood that. If nothing else, what you learned today? I'm going to get my ass back. You got to stop thinking that God is judging you in a way that where he doesn't want to bless you. It, to him, it's not even about the thing you're even asking for. It's about you wanting to stop sin, sinning. It ain't even about, you know... Uh, you talk, you asking for some stick and wood and some cement. Right. 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 That's just a resource. You're talking to the source. Listen to me. God will allow you to get the thing that you never thought that you would get. Amen. Only to put you in that thing. This is what T.D. Jake said. T.D. Jake said when he walked into, because he, he comes from West Virginia, y'all. Amen. And again, very talented, but he's just like anybody else. You just know him. But he walked in the house and said, Lord, you let me have this? It brings you to a place to say, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I, I'm, I'm just done. I remember when the Lord allowed me to have my Porsche. It, it knocked all kind of sin out of my life. It just says, I just said, this is so God. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I, I, I don't even want to do that anymore. Somebody said, I don't want to do that anymore. Each of us got a that. Tap your name and say, I know you got a that. I know you got a that. I know you got a that. But he says, here goes the point. You must ask him. When you ask him, it's not about him just giving you stuff. It's about him taking you through the process of, be, of deliverance. Did y'all get that? I'm going to say it again for those that are listening. It's not about you asking him for stuff. It's about him taking you through the process of of deliverance. As soon as you ask him for something, he says yes and amen. Now you begin a process of having to go through certain things to come to be mature enough to 
handle the thing that you ask him for. All right. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. We quit asking because we think we're not good enough to ask. And God says, I still want you to ask because I want to bless you in, in a place to where you come to where you don't even want to do that anymore. Or he'll say, I still want you to ask because as you ask me, I'm going to take you through a process. Many of you are in that process. Now watch this. Your biggest problem is that you mad because God just didn't straight up give it to you. You're mad that God is matriculating you. Because God says that you're not mature enough to handle what you're asking for. Oh, you think you are. You think you are. God says, I will not put anything in your hands that will hurt you. And you think you can handle it. But God says, you know what? I think you need to step back for a minute. Let's really check out your attitude. First of all, first of all, God says, I want you to be, watch this, I'm talking out of my heart. I want you to be pointed towards me, this is what he told me and first lady, and not be pointed to your job, to everything around you. I want to be first. Oh, you putting me first in this season of your life because you want something. But as soon as you get it, I already know you. I go back to second or third again. I've already done this with you. 86 times. And he says, I'm here again to give you another shot. All I did and all I'm doing, I said, God, I, it's not just a song. I surrender all, God. I give it all to you. What do you want me to do? Your friends will call it Bible thumpers and y'all drinking the Kool-Aid and, and all this. That, that, that's what your, huh? Holy rollers and all that. Well, see, I can say some things. I ain't going to say nothing right now. Amen. I can say something right back. But see, people used to say stuff to me like that. They don't really, but well, they don't say it to my face. Because why? I live blessed intentionally. And not about stuff. I'm talking about a, just a good life. I have challenges too. But my challenges will not kill me. Yeah. Your challenges will not kill you. Do you hear me? Yeah. Your challenges are going to make you better. Yeah. This is yeah. serious. You're going to go and ask God who you are. When you ask God who you are, be bold enough to ask him. Strong enough to hear. And the courage to be whatever he says. Who you are is so far beyond who you think you are. Who you are, I never would ever think that I would be a pastor sitting up here at Mary College. I couldn't have even thought something like that. If I knew that was going to be the case, I would have ran just like Jonah. See, some of the reasons why you don't know what you're going to do, because if God told you, you would run. Yeah. Yeah. Now watch this. I love what I do, though. Y'all were at the baptism yesterday. You saw little Eric come up. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like him throwing up his hands. Look, Mama, I did it. I don't see Eric now, but I see Eric at 26. Yeah. I see him at 32. And that I was out there with some people and they baptized me. We will be getting, we will be, we, we're leaving legacy when we do stuff like that. I could never have imagined that I'd be sitting up baptizing, you know, Desiree's dad. Yes. No, see, y'all don't get that. I grew up, I mean, he saw me coming in and just being slick and whoever I thought I was. And all of a sudden, God, you're using me to, to baptize him. If I knew what I had to do that, I'd be like, I ain't doing that. First of all, I wouldn't think he would have been there. And I didn't think I wouldn't have been there either. <laughs> but see, that's why I love this life. I love this life. Because stuff I could have never dreamt of myself. It ain't all the stuff and all that kind of stuff. Things I could have never dreamt of happens. People I thought I never would even meet happens. Yeah. 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 You ain't got a wish and a hope. Be who you were called to be. You got to be bold enough to ask. Strong enough to hear. Why? God may say that you are the salvation of your family. What? What, do, what does that mean? Nothing. You don't hear anything. You are the salvation of your family. I'm the salvation. They barely like me. They barely listen to me. They think I'm a kook. 
They think I'm nuts. I'm the what? Yes. And you have to have the courage to be. So I've had to have the courage to go and buy my father a Bible and say, open that up and read it. I've had to be bold enough to be who I am. And with anybody, even one of my uncles, I don't believe in all that. Oh, Darren, I don't believe in all that. No, I mean, look, look, you need Jesus for real. You got to be bold enough, whatever God calls you to be. It, listen, listen, it could be at your job. You got to be bold enough at the right moment to say what God says and not what everybody else says. Yeah. <laughs> the answer to this question of who I am, watch this, watch this, or request for a renewed mind. And that's what me and First Lady are going to start in on, y'all, in the beginning of August. It's going to request for a, new, a renewed mind. How I started, I think differently today. Yeah. So then whenever you discover what you're supposed to be doing, you have to renew how you think. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you're caught in a rut doing the same thing every day. I don't want to call it a rut. I call it any of your habits. And you need new kind of habits to acquire what you see. So the answer, it will request a, a, a renewed mind. It will require a repentant heart. Because you, you're going to have to say, watch this, like I had to do. I was so upset because all my friends got these big ministries and I'm like, I got to come and sit and be talking to this and they halfway listen to me anyway. And they were doing all this kind of stuff. I had to repent. God says, you know what? I will take you off of this earth. I will take you away from there and I'll put somebody in there. I'll raise some. God, you don't know who, I will replace you, Darren. <laughs> I will replace you. Right. And I've seen him do it before. Anybody ever got replaced before? Yeah. I have gotten replaced before running my mouth. While I was running my mouth, I was replaced. And they said, thank you. <laughs> you know what that means? You can leave. You can leave. Yeah, not now, but right now. Oh, you don't like it? And so I carry that same spirit. If you don't like what's going on right here, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> but when you do it with the wrong spirit a repentant heart you're going you're to repent because you're like all this time I've been doing me and God I haven't really been paying attention to you and it will cause you to repent when you repent now God can use you tell your neighbor just to hold on just a few more moments more tell him hold on a few moments more <laughs> Who am I, watch that the answer to this question will refocus my direction and reality. It's going to refocus your direction and reality. So for you to do what you got to do in August, this is soon. This ain't like you got a long time to, to do. Yeah, it's real soon, real soon. And know what it's going to do? It's going to refocus your direction and reality because your wife is looking for something and it's going to have to come through you. It's going to have to come through David. It's going to have to come through, you know, whatever. It's going to have to come through you. Through you. That means you. So then that's why when I say, for I may not have the money, Monique, but what I do have are some hands, and I'm going to pick up this dresser and I'm going to move it over here. What that do? It changes something. <laughs> that seems trivial. That seems trivial. But you got to get your habits changed. Are, are you hearing me? So, some people wonder, like, why do you go out to Livermore and only a few people show up? Because it changed my habits. I don't want to go out there and do I didn't want to. But I do now. Sometimes people do show up out there. Amen? But that ain't fun. I mean, I shoot gas and all kind of stuff we could be doing with that. But God hasn't said anything yet. Some of y'all live out there. Y'all can come anytime y'all want to. It refocused, but it refocused my direction and my reality. And because of that, I'm able to see things in a different light. Who I am or who am I who I am will lead you to who I am is. Y'all get that? Did I say that right? I sound kind of drunk, didn't it? That sound kind of... Did I sound kind of drunk a little bit? Yeah, okay. Who am I? Question, right? Who am I will lead you to who I am is. Because when I ask God who I am, it's just going to lead me back to him. Because I can't do it without him. One of the reasons why it's difficult being a pastor because I need God. I mean, I need him. You need God to be who you are. Your problem is you're on your own. Every now and then you're with God. 
If your first concern is to look after yourself, you'll never find yourself. But if you forget about yourself and look to me, you'll find both yourself and me. Next question. What is my purpose? What is my purpose? When people fail to understand the purpose of their life, abuse is inevitable. When you don't know who you are, you just do whatever you do. Abuse is inevitable. How many of you are abusing your life right now because you don't know specifically what you're supposed to be doing? Who you are is going to be uncomfortable, okay? Let's just get that out of the way. But it has to be more uncomfortable being you than you with God. Embracing your purpose also means embracing the necessary changes. So in 2 Timothy, every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration, and profitable for instruction, and reproof, and conviction of sin, for correction, and error, and discipline, and obedience, and for training, and righteousness, and holy living, and conformity to God's will, and thought, purpose, and action. The word is there to help you in your purpose and in action. You yeah, I see that. So that the people of God may be complete and proficient, well-fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So what I'm doing, who I'm born to be, is for someone else. Who you were born to be is for someone else. There's no, so I don't spend a lot of days being like sad or, 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 or uh, you know, depressed and that kind of thing, as long as I'm in my purpose. When I come outside of that, it's easy to go down the drain. But when I'm in the express will of God, I'm telling you, I can literally have like, no money. No, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. Like, somebody say no money. no money. No money. And I can have some of the greatest joy because whatever I don't have, somebody's still going to have. I mean, yeah. somebody got to show up. Yeah. But I'm in God's express will. Everybody get that? So when we fail to understand the purpose of their life, abuse is inevitable. You got to find your purpose. So you're going to ask God, what would happen if his purpose becomes my purpose? What would happen, you all, if God's purpose became your purpose? What were you doing last week? Was God's purpose your purpose? What were you doing the week before that? We're almost done. Romans 8, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. This is why everything I do, I want you to get religion out of your mind and I want you to get lifestyle in your mind. This is why everything I do, I want it to be for the glory of God. Because why? I want everything to work. Doesn't everybody want everything to work? Yeah, I want everything to work. All right, all right. Here's the question, why me? Look at your name and say, why me? Some of y'all are starting to understand this, so it begs the question, when you discover who you're born to be, you're going to ask yourself, why well, I got to do it? Because <laughs> there's some components you don't want to do. I remember when I discovered that I was supposed to be a pastor, my father-in-law said, he said, oh, Lord. He said, oh, dear God, something like that. I didn't know what he meant. When I understood what he meant, then I came to my own. God, why do I have to do this? He says, you don't. He says, it's just what you're called to do. Because a lot of people do, y'all, most of y'all do whatever y'all want to do. I don't get to do whatever I just want to do. But I like being taken care of. But you still come up sometimes, why me? Watch this. Discovering who you were born to be will many times make you ask, why me? Who you were born to be is typically much greater than how we think of ourselves. Either we think too highly of ourselves or too low. We need to pray to be aligned with God's thoughts of us. Is that okay? We'll close with Gideon with the why me, Judges 6 and 11. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath a great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of, of, of Abizir. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing the wheat at the bottom of the wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero or mighty man of valor, in some versions that you may be reading. The Lord is with you. So God comes to him and says, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, 
Why has all this happened to us? Anybody ever felt like that? Yeah. If God is with me, why is all this stuff happening, right? right? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Right. Any kids in here? Get tired of your parents talking about all this Jesus stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> and where is all this? Miracle? We, we have so many miracles, why can't we get no peanut butter and jelly then, right? right. <laughs> Where's all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. So he's got to a place where he doesn't want to ask God anything anymore. Right? Because we've been asking God and there ain't been no changes, right? Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go, the Lord did what? And that's what you're praying that God does for you. Go with the strength you have. Go with what? Strength. Doug, go with the strength you have. Philip, go with the strength you have. Stop waiting for more strength to come. David, go with the strength you have. Go with what? What? The strength. You go with the strength you have. Go with the strength you have. Because why? God is getting ready to do, with some, do something with the strength you have. He says, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Maybe y'all don't um, appreciate this, but it's like saying, I want you to go and take over Oakland away from San Leandro, because San Leandro has captured Oakland. And you're like, God, who am I? I live on 98th and Eads, Lord. I don't know how, I mean, Lord, I don't have nothing. God, we, shoot, we barely living in that. God, they can ready to take that house next week. Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? This is how we think. How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe, my God, of Manasseh. And I am the least in my entire family. Ah, this is what he says to God. The Lord said to him, I will be with you. Somebody say, God is going to be with me. And he says this, and I will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Let's put up, let's put up your debt situation. God says, I will fight with you, but you do your best. Do your best. And he says, I'm going to fight. God, who am I to take out 10 years worth of debt in one year? You, he says, you are mighty and strong in my name. God, who am I to get my family saved? I said, your family. Yes. Uncle Frank and all of them. Yeah. You are mighty and strong. But God, you know I got emotional issues and they all know it too. That's why I love it, God says. God, you know I don't have no money, I don't have no way. I love it, God says. God, how, why me, God? He says, because I can trust you. Because when we do this, you gonna know and everybody else gonna know that I'm in the midst of this. Everybody, so God's saying, I wanna show out in your life. Because you ain't going to put it to your degrees. You ain't going to put it to who you know. You ain't going to put it to none of that. All you're going to say is that all I can say is what God did for me. And now he's doing it for us. So why you? Why not you? You are the perfect candidate for God to realize all of the visions and the dreams that you've been having. But it's time to get them from this ethereal place as a vision or a dream and time to get it to a reality. And so I'm asking you to stand up and say, God, who am I? What is my purpose, God? Dare to ask God that. Yes. And then all you will see is some of your deficiencies. But God says, I want you just the way you are. Yes. He don't need you with another degree. Right. He don't need you knowing nobody else. He needs you just the way you are. And when you come to God just the way you are, watch what God will do. And watch how fulfilling your life will be. Please stand to your feet. Amen.